It is six o'clock. It's good to have everyone here tonight. Crowd is really light. Just have ten so far, but maybe more will come in. So it's been some very warm weather. We had our hottest day of the year on Monday, 96.4 at the house, but yesterday we had a torrential rain and if you could see the church building here, it's dry and brown and we're green and lush at home, but we've had rains all summer long. And uh, of course, Mom didn't make it out tonight with the heat and everything. Continue to remember Alice. She's had some very, very bad days, just extreme pain, just can't hardly make it. And uh, so do remember her in prayer. Uh, others, Ruby's parents, Vicki as well. She might be listening. She said she listened quite a bit last week. And... Uh, of course, uh, Stuart is he's on the road, and Sharon's sister, Denise, Brad, Terry, and any others I may be forgetting. Shirley, I'm sure won't be here tonight out in the heat and everything. And Aaron's listening online. She just sent me a text. So let's go ahead and get started. Number 198. Tonight's a very short chapter. We only have nine verses, but I didn't want to add any more to it. As, as in going into chapter nine verses. I didn't want to go into chapter 28. I just keep them the way they're already divided. On Jordan, stormy banks I stand and cast a wishful eye to Canaan's fair and happy land where my possessions lie. I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come go with me? I am bound for the promised land. Over all those wide extended plains shall one eternal day. There God, the sun forever reigns and scatters night away. I am bound for the promised land, and I am bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come and go with me? I am bound. For the promised land. When shall I reach that happy place and be forever blessed? When shall I see the Father's face and in his bosom rest? I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come and go with me? I am bound for the promised land. Before our prayer, let's sing number 149. And Stuart texts me that he's listening from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Glad he's tuned in with us. I was checking the weather. And he's warm there. It's 97. But Monday we got to 96.4, so we've been in the neighborhood. So it's a warm evening there in Albuquerque, just after 5 p.m. Let's sing this song, 149, then we'll have Larry to lead us in prayer. <coughs> Hark the gentle voice of Jesus fall tenderly upon your ear. Sweet his cry of love and pity call. Turn and listen, stay and hear. Ye that labor and are heavy laden, lean upon your dear Lord's breast. Ye that labor and are heavy laden, come and I will give you rest. 
Take his yoke, for he is meek and lowly. Bear his burden to him turn. He who calleth is the master holy. He will teach if you will learn. Ye that labor and are heavy laden upon your dear Lord's breast. Ye that labor and are heavy laden, come and I will give you rest. Then his loving tender voice obeying, bear his yoke, his burden take. Find the yoke his hand is on you lay, light and easy for his sake. Ye that labor and are heavy laden lean upon your dear Lord's breast. Ye that labor and are heavy laden, come and I will give you bow with me. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this beautiful day that you've given us. We're so thankful, Father, at the closing of this day that we can assemble in your name to sing these songs of praise unto you and to study your word and to uh, go to you in prayer, beseeching you for the blessings that we stand in need of. Well, Father, we are so thankful for uh, your uh, gift of life, your gift of liberty from sin, if we do those things that you have commanded us to do, and Father, we're so thankful that you have been with us and kept us safe, and that you have been with us and, and given us the strength to overcome those temptations that we're faced with. We're so thankful, Father, for everything that you give us, the many freedoms that we enjoy, and that we're able to worship and serve you without fear of man, fear of mankind, for the uh, being able, Father, to uh, do those things that we see uh, that needs to be done for, according to your word. We're so thankful, Father, that you have been with us today and kept us safe. So many things, Father, we can be thankful for because we know that we are so richly blessed. But, Father, we know the greatest gift of mankind was the gift of your Son and our Savior who died on the cross for our sins. And, Father, we're so thankful for that great sacrifice on our behalf. We're so thankful, Father, for the assembly together this evening. We're so thankful, Father, that we as brothers and sisters can study your word, that we can be built up in our, in our love and in our faith in you. And, and, Father, that we can grow stronger, we can be courageous in our service to you, that we would always stand up, Father, for those things that we know to be right, and we'd always stand against those things that are an abomination to you. And, Father, we pray that you'd be with us and strengthen us, that we would always live for you that we would always do those things that would be pleasing to you we're so thankful father for the good health that we enjoy this evening but we're we know that there are many who are not with us this evening because of illness we pray father that you would be with them we pray father that you would be with shirley edwards that you'd bless her strengthen her so that she'd back, be back with us soon we pray father that you would be with shirley parsons that you would give her the strength and the health that she needs to be able uh, to be back with us and we pray father that she would be back with us soon we pray father that you would continue to be with alice and bless her and we pray that you would uh, alleviate the pain that she has so that that she would be back to normal father we pray that she will we pray father that you would uh, continue to be with uh, Brad Terry, that you would, would bless him and keep him uh, keep him uh, free from cancer and that you'd be with that family and bless them. Pray, Father, that you would, would be with Vicki and bless her and heal her. We pray, Father, that you would be with Ruby's parents, that you'd bless them. We pray, Father, that you would, <coughs> uh, would be with all of those who are sick and need of your help. And we pray, Father, that you would be with them and, and bless them and, and comfort them as only you can. 
We pray, Father, that you would continue to be with, sure, with Stuart as he travels the nation's highways, that you would be with him, Father, and keep him safe. And we pray that, that he would, uh, would uh, be back with us soon and in a safe condition. We pray, Father, that you would forgive us for our many sins, <clears throat> knowing that we are weak and sinful. But, Father, we know that that you're there to forgive us when we fall short of what's expected of us. And, Father, we pray that we could all have pure and clean hearts in your sight this evening and that we could be pleasing to you. We know, Father, that Satan is always there to tempt us and draw us away, but we know, Father, if we live for you and that we serve you, that Satan has no control over us. And, Father, we're so thankful that you have given us the strength with your help, Father, to uh, and do those things that be pleasing to you and turn away from Satan and his temptation. Pray, Father, that you would be with us as we study from your word, that we can right divide your truths, that we can uh, learn uh, the full meaning of the things that you have written down for us. And we pray, Father, that you'd be with us and help us to completely understand your word. Be with us and forgive us and, and uh, find in heaven save us is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Let's sing two more and then we'll have our Bible classes. <clears throat> Number 545. Five hundred forty five. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, and that's one thing I know. My Savior pardoned me, and now I onward go. I know He'll take me through, though I am weak and poor, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. I have a loving Savior up in glory land. I don't expect to stop until I with Him stand. He's waiting now for me in heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land we live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their song of sweetest praise drift back from heaven's shore. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Before our classes, let's sing number 256. 
I'll just mention this because I know we have some here that attend South Green quite a bit. I know John does, and I guess Jordan probably goes with him sometimes. And I know Adam does. Of course, Adam's dad's an elder there, but they had contacted me, and they uh, really want to check on Adam. No, that's not why they contacted me. They wanted permission to link our Bible readings and streaming to their site so that uh, folks in the nursing home and all who can't attend and want to hear the Bible can listen to it. And I told them, oh, yeah, I'd be glad for them too. It was Adam's dad that called me. And so that's what they wanted. But while on the phone, they also, they're getting a new computer system in the office. They asked me to install it and set it up for them. And uh, I don't get many computer calls anymore because I don't advertise. I turn down a lot. And uh, so, but I was honored they asked me because they have a lot of talented computer folks there that are much better than me. But they wanted me to do it, so I'm very honored. So taking care of that for them. So getting to visit with them a little bit this week. I'll probably work tomorrow. Assuming the computer comes in tomorrow. That's, you got to have a computer to put it in. But I mainly wanted to let you know that they want to link our live broadcasts and the Bible audio where you can pick out each one that listen to. So that will really uh, hope reach a lot of people to be able to utilize those things. Number 256, and then we'll have our classes. I'm not ashamed to own my Lord, nor to defend His cause. Maintain the honors of His word, the glory of His cross. Firm as His throne, His promise stands, and He can well secure what I've committed to his hands till the decisive hour. Then will he own my worthless name before his father's face. And in the new Jerusalem appoint for me a place. Caden, you ready for class? Ruby, are you ready? Are you ready? I'm not sure. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and Ruby pointed out she and I dressed just alike, light color khakis and a blue bu uh, blue button shirt. She really works to plan that. She said, "No, it's more like if I'd known, no, if I had noticed." <laughs> it was an accident. It was an accident. <laughs> Tonight's a very short chapter. Second Chronicles twenty seven. You don't have a lesson, it won't matter. All matches up. Each verse corresponds to the question because there's only nine verses. I didn't go into chapter 28 any. I wanted to keep it as is. Just a moment here. All right. Number one. These are all random, of course. Quite a few won't be here. Stuart with a U. K number two. Andrew. Okay, number three, Larry. Verse three. <clears throat> he built the high gates of the house of the Lord, and on the wall of the he built much. Okay, number four. Adam. Verse four. Uh, moreover, he built cities in the mountains of Judah, and in the forest he built castles to power. K 
Okay, number five, Jordan. Okay, number six, John. All right, in a row here. So Jonathan became mighty because he prepared his ways before the Lord his God. Number seven, Kathy. Number eight, Mike. Okay, one more is all we got. Sherry? Okay, a short chapter tonight. Next week's a little longer. 20, was it 27 or 8 verses? 27. Let's go over these. All right, last week we closed out with Uzziah dying. You remember Uzziah was the very, uh, started out very righteous. He was the king who built something in Jerusalem, a word you don't think of being in the Bible. What was that? Engines. He had cunning men that built engines in Jerusalem. They were things to shoot arrows, great stones, and his name spread abroad. Probably what we would call catapults, but he built them. And It doesn't say here that he had, yeah, it does say cunning. I thought it didn't have cunning men in this particular account, but it does. Uh, all of his weaponry, but his heart was lifted up, and he went in to offer incense on the altar. He was not a priest, was not allowed to do this. Eighty-one priests came in to stop him, and because of his sin of doing this, and no doubt his pride, the Lord struck him with leprosy, and he had to live in an isolated house, several house it says, in uh, the King James Version. And uh, so Jotham, his son, had to reign because he was a leper, and he was till the day he died, and they had to bury him out of the city. So he really had a great downfall because of his pride. The Lord gave him everything, uh, the victories and these the... the men able to invent machinery that no one else had and uh, he offered incense when he was to not and so that was his sin so let's look at just just nine verses here now his son uh, is going to he's already been king but it tells you know about the beginning of it Jotham was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign and reigned 16 years in Jerusalem Makes him 41. His mother's name also was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. Now there was a Zadok, the priest. As a matter of fact, if you look up Zadok, I think there's eight different Zadoks in the Old Testament. Yep. And this one is apparently the number th three. Uh, here, father of Jerusha, the wife of King Uzziah, and mother of King Jotham of Judah. And so... Many Zadoks. Apparently it was a pretty kind. And the name means righteous. No wonder people, you know, chose that name. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father did. Howbeit, he entered not into the temple of the Lord, but still the people acted corruptly. So he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, although he did not enter into the temple of the Lord. But the, still the people acted corruptly. What do you think the significance was of him not entering into the temple? You know, Aaron's probably, I know she's listening, you may be checking Kaufman's, I did not. Was Uzziah because his father had been a leper? Was Jotham not allowed to go into the temple? I'm trying to think. Uh, sometimes it carried on, you know, certain things you couldn't do for generations because of this. And so I, I, let me just uh, I 
look, Aaron may or may not be looking. I did not have Kaufman's up, and I apologize, but I almost never uh, look him up anymore. I don't even think I have him bookmarked. And uh, that's not it. I had a couple of thoughts uh, regarding this. Let's just see what he says about Second Chronicles 27. I don't look at him too much because he, uh, I think some things, well, it's written by man. I don't necessarily agree with everything that uh, I don't think he has anything doctrinally wrong. Just some things I think are a lot of speculation. Second Chronicles 27, so we'll take a little bit of time because this is such a short chapter. Uh, he comments, only the high places were taken away. Let me access his study. He, he looks at the parallel in Second Kings uh, here. I don't see the... Aaron said she's looking. I'm not for sure, and I can't remember if the law prevented those who were a leper going in or not. And it's a little, I sort of say it's a little hard to look up. Probably so. Anybody could enter into the temple. But you couldn't, as far as I know, you know, you, you could go into the temple to bring your offerings, but you couldn't go into the holy place. But as Adam said, it may mean just as his father did. And, uh, but still the people did sinfully. All right. I was trying to look up about leprosy and generations there. But still the people, one take I did on this, and I'm probably totally wrong in this, was that he did not go into the temple and the people did yet corruptly. Maybe because of his lack of worship, the people did corruptly. I'm actually not for sure, but he's probably, and as uh, Adam said, did not do the way that his father did in corrupting the temple. But are there any questions or comments? It's hard to find, you know, a lot of times information like probably Kaufman didn't really comment upon it because he doesn't know himself. But one thing I do know, he didn't enter into the temple of the Lord. That's that. To speculate is to add, unless there's a parallel passage to it. And I don't think it was there anywhere. And if Aaron finds something, you can copy and paste it to me. He built the high gate of the house of the Lord, and on the wall of Ophel he built much. Ophel, I think, is one we look back and see that his father uh, had had built. His father had done much building. It's a ridge of hills. It means hill in Jerusalem, fortified for the descent, the defense of the city. So he was building up protection. Moreover, he built cities in the mountains of Judah. And in the forests, he built castles and towers. I'd probably say fortresses. It probably uses the word castle because it was translated during pretty much medieval times, maybe a little after. Certainly the retranslation was done way after that in the 1800s, but the one we read. He fought also with the king of the Ammonites and prevailed against them. And the children of Ammon gave him the same year 100 talents of silver and 10,000 measures of wheat and 10,000 of barley. So much did the children of Ammon pay unto him both the second year and the third. So because of his defeating the Ammonites, they like gave tribute to him for three years here. So Jotham became mighty. As I, we were listening to this coming over and this verse really caught my attention. Jotham became mighty because he prepared his ways before the Lord his God. He was preparing his ways in a righteous way. And that's it about him, really, unless whatever we look in Kings, and we may look up a little. Now the rest of the acts of Jotham and all his wars and his ways, lo, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. He was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. And Jotham slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. 
and Ahaz's son reigned in his stead. So not a lot, really. Any comments? That's the end of the chapter. I was going to look a little bit about Jotham here. The parallel passage in 2 Kings, which we've looked at before. Jotham, his son, reigned in his stead. Uh, the high places were not removed. The people sacrificed and burned incense still in high places. So during his reign, he did not uh, take away the high places. I was reading here. I don't think it says anything here about him not entering into the temple. I think the point is, and as Adam said, making the point that he did not make the mistake his father made. Okay, is there anything else? It's a very short chapter. Anything you want to discuss regarding this? I could have gone on to the next chapter, but I thought it was a little too long to break it up. Yeah, I remember what you're talking about, and I can't think. I guess I was just comparing him. This guy, this king was 41, and you kind of wonder why 41. Yeah, I'm not for sure. Aaron said she didn't find anything about it either. What king was it that was, he said 39, so that uh, he would not have to see his son. Uh, you know, the things going. Well, this isn't it. I'm not for sure, Larry. I can hear the passage. But you remember the passage. Yeah. We actually let him die early so he wouldn't see the things coming. You know, there's a. Sometimes it's better to die early than it is later. I was wondering if maybe this was the same, the same reason. It may have been. Yeah, he died very young at 41 here. And Jotham was relatively righteous. Not that it matters how our chart has it, but I do wonder how they have it here in this particular chart of the kings. Well, I can't get my page up, but just a second here. He has Jotham as a middle-of-the-road king, I guess because he didn't take away the high places and such like. Now he has, next you see, total thumbs down. Hezekiah, even the Bible says there was none like Hezekiah. He gets a complete thumbs up. We can look at the years. Joash reigned Asa 41 years. Was that what you said? Or you said 39, didn't you? He died at age 39. Of course, that doesn't mean that's how long he reigned. So. Sometimes it doesn't hurt to die early. Now, I speak as one who has not died yet. But there are situations like Hezekiah, which we're going to get to. He was, you know, a good king. He was going to die. And uh, Isaiah told him. And uh, he wept before the Lord and, and pleaded and, or just turned his face toward the wall. And before Isaiah even left, the Lord told Isaiah, go back and tell him I'll give him 15 more years. Sounds like a long time, but 15 years passes quick. But during that 15 years... I think he had a, especially a very prideful moment whenever people came to more or less see him after he recovered of his illness. He show, showed him all the things in his house. Look at my treasures. Look at what I've done. Look at what I have. And the Lord was very displeased with that and made his sons to be captives and eunuchs in the service of King Babylon, the king of Babylon. So as far as his sons were concerned, Hezekiah would have done better to have died early than having those extra 15 years. And even you can see people today that live in a state that they suffer and the such like. If you're living for the Lord, an early death is not a bad thing. It's like Paul. He wanted to 
go, but he said, I think the word betwixt is only twice in the King James. I don't know. It may be more than that, but it's not a lot. It's a word we don't use. We know it's quite a few more. Once in the New Testament. Uh, so it is a lot more than twice. I was thinking it was twice somewhere, but it's not even twice in the New Testament. Paul said, For I am a straight betwixt two, having a desire to part and to be with Christ, which is far better. Adam? Right. It's a bit more than the second Chronicles does. Although it mentions less about King per se. What second Kings what? Second Kings fifteen verse uh thirty four thirty five. All right. Tell them about Jotham here. Right, the high places were not removed, the people sacrificed and burned incense still in the high places. He built the higher gate of the house of the Lord. And so they were still doing quite sinful things. And so the king really didn't put a stop to it. So that's probably why they gave him a middle of the road. So thank you for looking that up. Is there anything else? We still have quite a few minutes, but it doesn't hurt to stop early as well. I was looking here. It may get rained on. There's, I'm getting a lot of lightning alerts. Anything else? I may knock on the door and just let Ruby free. I hear it. I was saying, this sounds like it's going great. <laughs> Ruby didn't teach 34 years for nothing, you know. Uh, for those watching online, since we're basically finished, I'm just going to show you all the rain we had yesterday and people came in late here. It absolutely poured down. Uh, and if you look, our yard was already green. It's never dried up all summer. It's been that green all summer. Jerry mows our yard. He can't hardly keep up with it. It just stays lush all summer. We had cats on the porch hanging on. And, and they were. They were hunkered at the front door. Just I really thought we were going to lose that tree right there because it was really, it's coming all different directions. So that was right. What? 1.33. And uh, pretty heavy rain. I think uh, Sherry said Canmer got over three. So, quite a rain indeed. Well, let me go ahead and knock on their door and see how they're doing. I do. I hadn't forgot them. I was thinking about it. I was just watching them and the events going on. Just a moment.
Turn, if you will, to number 705, Who Will Follow Jesus? Very short chapter tonight. Well, we learned that Jotham, you know, is considered mostly, I guess, righteous, but uh, a lot of the people under his command didn't do right. But one verse, and I it really caught my attention when we were listening coming over is Second Chronicles 27 6. So Jotham became mighty, but we tell why he did. Because he prepared his ways before the Lord his God. He kept the Lord in his plans. He did things according to the will of the Lord. The Lord was always in his thoughts and what he chose to do. And we will, and we can't keep from becoming mighty if we put the Lord first in all of our ways and prepare our heart before the Lord. And so, of course, to obey the Lord initially in one's baptism, preceded by repentance, confession, and belief, and to keep following the Lord, our ways, where that we go all the time, that's what we need to do. So in a way, the song really does ask the same thing. Talking about the ways, the ways that we go. So who will follow Jesus? If you're here and need to respond, let's sing the first verse of 705 as we stand. Who will follow Jesus standing for the right? Holding up his banner in the thickest fight. Listening for his order, ready to obey. Who will follow Jesus, serving him today? Who will follow Jesus, who will make reply? I am on the Lord's side, Master, here am I. Who will follow Jesus, who will make reply? I am on the Lord's side, Master, here am I. Turn, if you will, to number 25. We'll sing the last verse. And then let's have Adam to dismiss us in prayer after one verse of this song. I know this is probably Mom's favorite. Does anyone remember 73 years ago tonight? Mom does. It was what she calls the ice cream social. I didn't tell her I was going to mention this, but Kathy asked me about it. It was DC, it was uh, in it was August 21st, 1943. Of course, Mom living there on the farm across the road from us, and they had a social uh, up the, right, the house where we where I grew up actually, and they had homemade ice cream, and all neighbors came in. Uh, I think even our future father rode a bicycle to it. And Mom was 12 years old. They played games. They played drop the handkerchief. And she's talked about that so many times. A wonderful, what a wonderful memory that is for her. So every year on August 21st, we get her ice cream. And so to commemorate that. And so we're going to have some tonight. And uh, there are only four people, I think, still living that were there. Mom, uh, Mike's mother, her sister, you know, you've heard us mention, and her son. And so... Very few people, but uh, I tell mom jokingly, and because I asked mom, I said, "Tell me who was there. Tell me the games you played. What was it like?" And because the war was going on in 1942, and she's told me the story so many times. But I want her to. I ask her to tell him. I truly feel like I was there 73 years ago. I can see everybody. I know what happened. It's a wonderful memory, and the Lord has given us our minds to be able to remember. So mom's going to have an ice cream social when we get home. And so, all right. we pray she probably won't do drop the handkerchief and run around the circle behind us trying to pick it up. But anyway, I just wanted to mention that a little personal note. Since August 21st, fell on a Wednesday. And one more thing, Mom actually reminded me, I'd forgotten it. Two years ago today was the total eclipse. So we had gone down to Tennessee, Castilian Springs, and got to see a, an amazing view of the totality. Is there anything else? Don't forget our services on the Lord's Day morning at 9 o'clock. Let's sing the last verse of 25 and Adam will dismiss us. Anywhere with Jesus I can go to sleep When the darkening shadows round about me creep Knowing I shall wake and never more to roam Anywhere but Jesus will be home, sweet home. Anywhere but 
Okay, thanks.